Hi, welcome. It's Kenny Russell, Bulldozer of Faith, Living Life in the Spirit. We're on the Planting Seeds of Light tour, and we're here in Liverpool in the UK. I'm with Charlie. Charlie, how are you? I'm really good, actually. Yeah, yeah awesome. we had a good evening. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. We have a great evening, and, and here we're at your group here. Um, it's exciting to see what the Father is doing here in Liverpool. Yeah. What has brought you to the Hebraic roots of the faith? And obviously, you're leading here, and you're leading many people in this journey. Um, <clears throat> it's really bizarre how it happened. I think the first thing that happened was um, I was walking up my stairs, and there was a noise coming out of my bedroom. And I never left my computer on or nothing. And I thought, what is going on? And I got that, you know, that spooky feeling of like, right. ooh, what's going on here? I went in and I sat down and my computer was on and I hadn't left it on. And there was a message on the computer screen that said, I'm not coming back for a, a filthy whore, I'm coming back for a spotless bride. And I thought, whoa, what are you trying to say, Lord? This is, this is freaking me out. And then I just felt convicted. And after that, I started... I don't know. I started searching. I'm thinking something. I know something's wrong. Right. Something's not right. And I just remember this um, this particular day. At the time, I was playing in a, a punk band, which were really quite crude. The fella used, to, you know, I shouldn't really go into any of it. It was not wholesome anyway. And I was in this band, and I remember thinking, I shouldn't be doing this, should I, Lord? But I did it for a bit, and then I just this one day, I phoned him up. And I said, I've got to have a word with you. And I quit, I quit the band. And that night, it was, and it was really quite bizarre. Bear in mind, I'm a worship leader in a Sunday church at this same time. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be doing a gig on the Saturday nights in the pub with craziness, and then I'd be worship leading. But um, <clears throat> this particular night, I just remember it. I got on, on my knees, and I said, Lord. See, this is something I don't think many Christians really do this. I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I, um, I said, end of everything. Absolutely everything. Everything is yours. I realize, Lord, I've just been messing about. Right. I don't want to mess about now. Everything's yours. You deserve everything. It's, it's either all or nothing. And then it was bizarre. I went into bed. I picked up my Bible and I read about the leper. And the leper says... Um, Lord, if you could make me clean, would you do it? The Lord said, be clean. And I knew something weird was going to happen. And I said, Lord, oh, protect me, would you? Protect me. I closed my eyes and I saw like, what were like three demonic creatures. And without even thinking about it, I just said, cleanse me, Jesus. As soon as I said it, I don't know what went on. I probably have to ask him face to face. From my feet, going up my body, my whole body started shaking to the wow. point where I didn't know what was happening. I even when it was happening, and it happened in three waves, I said, I'm a bit freaked out by this, Lord. And I remember thinking, wow, I'm not going to get to sleep now. I'm totally freaked out. I was flat out, fell asleep. Woke up the next day and went from smoking 60 fags a day to not touching one. Three days after I hadn't had a ciggy, my mum said to me, when are you going to stop smoking, Joe? And I didn't, I was like, Pff. I had to tell people because there was no gripe and there was no... <coughs> And I just thought, wow, what's happening, Lord? Been transformed. And, and then I got asked to do a Bible study in the church. I'll try and keep this shorty. And I was like, what am I going to do it on, Lord? And I just did what a lot of Christians do as well. I opened the Bible up, and it was Ezra, and I thought, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, and I was like, well, I better read about him. And I read, and I was like, we taught the law to Israel. And I was like, is this what you want me to speak on? And then a lad who was here tonight, I'd lent him a Bible. He gave me it back. And I opened it on this book I'd never even heard of, and it was Ezra 7.10 highlighted, and it was all about it being laid on his heart to teach the law and all the statutes to the people of Israel. I didn't know at that point that we were Israel. Wow. So I'm thinking, what is this all about? So I started realizing the Lord spoke to me, and he just said, my Lord is not done away with. So I'm trying to share this with people. I've got no knowledge at all. I'm just getting shot down. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I can't do a Bible study on this. So I walked up a mountain. It's not a mountain, really. It's a big hill, but I'm, you know, just picking it up a bit. And I got to the top and I said, Lord, give me a verse. Give me another. I'll just be one of them Christians who praise. I knew something was going to happen. And I put my finger in and I opened it. And it was the same, Ezra 7.10. Wow. And I got more grief and more weird things happened. And I just remember um, getting that thing again on my phone. Just give us a verse, Lord, and I just willy-nilly typed in. 
And I come up and I started reading. It was something to do, I don't know, somebody fell over or something. It was absolutely irrelevant to, you know, where I was at. And then my phone just went whoosh, and changed. And it was Joshua chapter one. And I was like, wow, what happened then? So I started reading it and I'm reading it thinking, this has got no relevance to me either. Until I got down to the bit where it starts talking about be strong and courageous. Meditate on this law day and night and I'll be with you and I'll make you prosperous. Don't go to the right and don't go to the left. And I'm reading it and I'm getting goosebumps. And the Lord just, I don't know, he was just so gracious with me. And he, then he started revealing his truth to me. So then I had answers. And I had a great blessing then. My friend who's like the co-pastor here. At first, I thought he was actually against me because he, 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 he was a character, he tests everything, you know. Right. And I had all these people who were attacking me anyway. But then he revealed the fact that he's seen this as the truth and I had like an ally then. And it was like, thank you, Lord. Oh, wow. And we'd spend hours and I had somebody to talk to. And it was just like, wow. And then we started trying to do things like keep the Sabbath. The first time we did it, I think he's over there. First time we did it, we just went in a field because <laughs> we had nowhere to go. I said, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> and we just had a Bible. We had a Bible and it was a nice day. And, but it cost me. I got effectively kicked out of the church. I you know, no hard feelings. They said I was mentally ill and that the relationship I'd been in, which was a long-standing one, that broke down. And There was a cost, but... <clears throat> He was beautiful to me all the way through. He's been, these, these, are, these are words that keep coming back to me. All the days of my life, he's been good to me. When I was a kid, and I was 14, a fellow walked past our house. He was a complete scallywag, really crazy character. And my mum and dad saw him, thought, oh my word. He came in, he was a pastor. They were like, not you. You're not a pastor. He said, I am. And he talked about spirit healing people. I got upstairs because I thought he's mad. And then I heard, Charlie. And I came down the stairs. This fella's going to pray for you. I was like, Dad, you are joking. I've been watching Jesus in Nazareth, and I just remember thinking, Jesus is great, isn't he? This fella put his hand up, and I was just filled with the power of God. And I was like, wow. I got on the phone to me, mate, and said, it's real. I ended up. The Lord gave me a vision to stand up in the school assembly and, and preach. And he, told, he spoke to me. It was amazing. He just said, he's always speaks to me dead little. Like, what I mean, dead little, not lots of words. He just said, I love you, and showed me this vision. And I thought, right, wow, I've got to stand up in the school assembly and preach, I don't know about that. I asked if I could and the teacher said, no, you can't do that. <laughs> no, you can't do that. So I asked for the sign, I said, if I was supposed to do it, Lord, I want somebody to turn around to me and say, Jesus is with you. On the day that I was supposed to stand up in the school assembly, my friend Graham Jennings turned around and said to me, God is with you. And I felt the power of God come on me again, but I bottled out. And it wasn't until two weeks later when I actually stood up and did it. She went mad and twirled me into her office. And that just makes me laugh because she said, um, I told you not to do it. I thought Christians respected authority. And I said, well, we do. It's just that God told me to do it. And he's got more authority than you. <laughs> and she went mental. Well, you know, it's interesting what you're saying, Charlie, because... What you're saying is you have come into the Hebraic roots of the faith by divine appointment by the Spirit. Yeah. And uh, one thing I'm noticing as I'm traveling around the world, there is literally thousands of people that are having similar encounters to what you're just talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And they're coming into Torah. They're coming back to Torah and they're being transformed. Do you find a real freedom in the spirit walking with Torah, or do you think you've come back to legalism? What's your thoughts? Um, well, I knew the Lord when I was a young kid, and I walked with him. And at the age of 18, I became an alcoholic. Not overnight. Uh -huh. I lived for 20-odd years as an idiot in the world. And I think the Lord spared me getting entangled in Christianity. And then he called me out of it. And I went to a Sunday church and they were very nice to me and I don't have anything against them. They prayed for me and I was healed. My liver was completely healed. But when the Lord, when I got serious with him and asked him, Lord, this is it, I just want to surrender to you. When he opened my eyes, the difference is absolutely ridiculous. Yes. I sometimes say to people, it was like going from having a little rubbish portable with a rubbish signal to going to full surround sound, plasma television, the whole hit. And... If anybody thinks that it's, it's, it's a bondage to follow the Lord. See, I spent 20 years doing things my way and it was a complete joke and it was a disaster. 
So when I see his teaching and his instruction, and I recognize him for who he is, the creator of all things, who loves me more than anybody else will ever love me, Amen. I just think, wow, I wish there was more commandments. <laughs> Bring it on. Because these are the things that give me blessing in my life. It's, re it's relationship, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful to wake up every day and think, wow, he's in charge. Because when I was in charge, I always knew it would faff up. Yeah. And I, I can see him in the feasts that we keep. And every Sabbath, it just you know it feels right because in your spirit it sits right and it's just like, wow, thank you, Lord. And somebody said before, it's like coming home, but really coming home. And it's, it's only now that I really know who the Messiah is. And he's even more amazing than what he was. Amen. You know, your testimony is one of supernatural transformation, but the Father brings us into truth. He reveals, I love your picture, you know, going from a little black and white telly with some little uh, rabbit ears to full plasma surround sound. It's so true because it brings us back to who we are called to be. Charlie, thanks very much for having me here tonight just to share. It's really good. Yeah, it, it's, it's been a blessing to come and meet you. And, and you know, we have a commitment here to the UK to be coming into Britain to make a difference. Um, our testimony coming through the UK is that this nation is ripe on the harvest. We need to be sowing into the UK. We need to be sowing to see lives change. They're ready. We've seen from the Christian pastors, Christian churches, Hebrew roots groups coming alive, and it's exciting. And again, we're seeing it tonight. The testimonies of the people that I've been talking to since uh, the end of the meeting has just been yeah. incredible. So, Charlie, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.